Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com doodly <laughs> Super sizes in this country. We loved our super sizes. Now we can't have them. Now we can't have super sized McDonald's anymore. Kamala took it away. Unauthorized opinions. Welcome back to another episode. Trump's at McDonald's. We're pumped about that. Just for the sheer fact that we love McDonald's. How could you not? They're one of the only brands trying to lower prices for you. Their coffee is lower than anywhere else. It's really trying times. When McDonald's has to cut prices... We're in trying times. Welcome back to the podcast, uopod.com, patreon.com slash uopod for loyal subscribers to get loyal bonus content. We've got so much to get to. We've got another interview with a volleyball player who refused, straight up refusing now, to play against the transgender player at San Jose State University. We brought you one before. We're bringing you another, and you are seeing her on Fox News now. Her name is Sia Lili. It's actually a much more Samoan Hawaiian name than we can pronounce, so we're just calling it as we get Sia Lili. We will get to her in a moment, but we've got so much to get through here. There, there's so many things happening in the world, and a lot of them are focused around the presidential election. A lot of them are focused around culture up here in Canada, and there's still things... If, if you wonder... If you're from America or the UK, we had Louis Brackpool here last week. Now, he was astounded that you can say things freely in Canada, even though we do have hate speech laws. He was still astounded. We went to an apple pie place, famous for its apple pie. It's off the highway. It's called um, the Big Apple, I believe. And needless to say, there was lots of... Uh, you know, not lots of non-Canadians there, and uh, we were talking about it. He was afraid to talk about it. You know, he was afraid to say it openly because in the United Kingdom you might get arrested for that. Now here, we are just behind on different things. Not every country is the same in its wokeness. You know, England has its speech. We're just behind on other things here. And one of those, as an example, was on The Dragon's Den the other day. That's a TV show that uh, it actually precedes Shark Tank. The English version was called Dragon's Den. And then there was Shark Tank in the U.S. And now and there's Dragon's Den in Canada. Of course, you don't want to watch it. You don't want to watch Dragon's Den in Canada. And you probably wouldn't have wanted to watch it before this incident. So what this video is that we're about to show you is two French Canadians, you know, Quebecois, sort of my people. They come up to the investors, as they would on Shark Tank, and they say, hey, we've got a product for you. It is a bubble tea product. And that's a, that's a, a Taiwanese, I believe, product. 
and there's one guy on Dragon's Den who is not happy with it. Let's take a look. Let's see what we can see. He basically says that what they're doing by not being, um, is it Taiwanese or Hong Kong? Taiwanese, I believe. If Since they're not Taiwanese, they can't sell bubble tea. My name is Jessica. And my name is Sebastian. We are here to... Jessica and Sebastian. So this is the guy here that's going to have a problem with it. He is a, I believe, a Chinese guy or a Korean guy. No, wait, he's a Chinese guy and he's from the television show called Kim's Convenience in which he plays a Korean guy. So let's remember that in the realm of cultural appropriation. Of disrupting or disturbing bubble tea because it's something that's Why? very there can near. be new takes on things. Sure, Nothing but I'm looking not, at not I'm, everything I'm looking has at to these two guys. No, but then there's also an issue of cultural appropriation. There's an issue of taking something mm. that's very distinctly Asian in its identity and and quote unquote making it better, which I have an issue with. So you can't t you can't make something better if you're not from. There can be no Asian fusion. There can be no Tex-Mex. You cannot change it. And he says Asian identity, which is weird because Indians are Asians. North Koreans are Asians. Mongolians are Asians. You see what I'm getting at? This is not just an Asian thing. There's no North American or Western thing that you can make a claim to. This guy's making crazy claims here that you can't change something or even sell it if you are not of the continent or the race. But I want to hear the pitch before I formulate an opinion. And oh boy, so that's, uh, that's one way to start. Well, yeah, yeah, that's one way to start. A little heavy there. <laughs> but okay. But it's not an ethnical product anymore. Not with the popping bobas. So we took the, the, the version, the Asian version, and we made it with the fruit, with juice. The popping boba is new. I can't say I've had that. It definitely is an experience when you're having it. And do you manufacture this yourself? No, so we have uh, three partners, but they are exclusive partners. So they only make my bubble tea. Where? Uh, in Quebec. Mm. What made you guys get into this business? I was like looking at the data about bubble tea and uh, the popping boba was just rising. Every the popping boba, this guy sounds like George St. Pierre. This is on CBC Gem, by the way, I'd like to point out, which is you know, CBC, for those of you who don't know, is paid for by the taxpayer. And then their app, their premium app, is CBC Gem. This is the most publicity they've ever had, for sure. Because it's a free app using taxpayer dollars, giving you shows that nobody likes. But, in addition to shows nobody likes, they'll give you cultural appropriation. Or the complaints of that. Let's skip forward to see if we can get to the point uh, where this guy starts complaining about the fact that... There we go. We can just see it. <laughs> a little word after the boba. Clearly you're doing very well. What respect is being paid to this very Asian drink mm -hmm. that has blown up around the world? And is it in your teas? Is it in your product development? Who is on your staff? Who is on your cap yes. table that is that is uh, that for it's you? It's a good question because our uh, best partner is in Taiwan, actually. Yeah. So uh, they make all the receipt, uh, all the boba. We work really hard. We travel to Taiwan. We speak with them. It's it, they are part of our, our team. It's 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 really important for us. So uh, that that's the best part. That that's the cultural part of our product. So they go to Taiwan. They get the recipes and the product from Taiwan. So the product product is authentically Taiwanese. Will it be enough for him to say, it's okay for you to sell this? Because what he asked was insane. He asked, is there people of the race that created this product involved in your production? Are there people of that race involved in your sales, your marketing, your team? Which is insane. If you were to be like, um, let's say that white people invented, you know, Burger King or something. Does every Burger King around the world have to have a white person? You'd be insane to claim that. You'd be insane to go to Taiwan and say, are you consulting white people about this Whopper? And I know we talked about McDonald's. Are you consulting somebody from West Virginia who wears overalls most of the year about this slop burger you're eating? <laughs> Are you consulting them? Let's see if that explanation was enough for him. In your can, and I am looking for anything that tells me where boba came from. And where boba came from is Taiwan. 
you know, I started this venture company for a lot of reasons, but really primarily to uplift minority entrepreneurs. And, and not only do I feel like this is not happening here, but that I would be uplifting a business that is profiting off of something that feels so dear to my cultural heritage. I want to be a part of bringing boba to the masses, but not like this. So for that reason, I'm out. Thanks. Respect that. Respect that. So that's insane, and I'm wondering if now that he came out and said that this is effectively racist, which is an insane thing. I want to be part of things for minority entrepreneurs, so that just means non-white, obviously, which is an insane thing to say. I want to help people based on racial grounds. It doesn't matter who they are as long as they're not white, is what he's saying. And I wonder if that will scare off the other investors, even though we've got black guy, Indian woman, white woman, all these different cultures and races on this panel. Um, I'm wondering if that will scare them out of it because for some reason, the one guy has said that it's racist. Not sure I'm the right partner for you. So for that reason, I'm going to be out. Um, I like it. I want to help you build the distribution out in the U.S. That does take money, for sure. And it takes a team. And that's what you really need to build here. I will offer you... So I don't want to give it away or else CBC will copyright strike me with my own tax dollars. But obviously, she's giving them an offer. So she's not as cucked as he is. She works in beer. Uh, that lady, I forget her name, unfortunately, that's not on purpose, but she works in beer, I know that, and obviously she's not afraid to make money because the Chinese guy who plays a Korean guy on a Canadian TV show says it's racist to do that with his bubble tea. You can't be, you can't serve bubble tea. We used to love our Chinese bubble tea, but now that these white Quebecers are doing it, they're pieces of crap, we can't let them, we can't let them. Let me know in the comments if my impression sucks or not I'll, i might keep doing it anyways but this is an insane thing but this is where canada is in terms of our woke culture but maybe it's just the cbc maybe it's just public broadcasting where a chinese guy who culturally culturally appropriates convenience stores of south koreans thinks that it's not okay for some white quebecers to work with taiwanese people for, he, he really moved the goalpost there are you working with these people that make the products, okay, you are. But does on your can, does it say that it's from Taiwan? You have to pay homage to, <laughs> to your employees, I guess, when you're making a product. Completely insane things, but that's where Canada is behind in terms of culture and where we're sucking at. Just a small example. I want to move on to Kamala Harris and everything for a little bit. Um, we're going to get into, we're going to progressively progressively keyword get into where we are going um into the interview with the volleyball player so our next clip is from dear old hillary clinton this was posted by my friend of the show val venus former professional wrestler um this is hillary clinton you know a short clip there we might be missing context but i think we have enough context here correct me if i'm wrong but hillary clinton saying that if we don't have censorship on Social media platforms were going to lose control, and we'll give her a best case scenario, a benefit of the doubt, to best we, the best we can on this clip. Let's take a look. Platforms, whether it's Facebook or Twitter X or uh, Instagram or TikTok, whatever they are, if they don't moderate uh, and monitor the content, uh, we lose total control. And it's not just the social and psychological effects; it's real harm. Let's watch one more time. If the platforms, whether it's Facebook or Twitter X or uh, Instagram or TikTok, whatever they are, if they don't moderate uh, and monitor the content, uh, we lose total control. And it's not just the social and psychological effects. It's real harm. Second time there, obviously, without video. That's scary in itself. Just the Hillary voice playing to you. That's what would have happened, I think, if she won in 2016. If Hillary won in 2016, you've got uh, morning messages played over giant PA systems in your town, like hurricane warnings, where Hillary Clinton wakes you up in the morning. Good morning, America. Good morning, my beautiful Americans. Don't forget to 
praise your first female president today. Um, thank a trans neighbor. And don't forget, if you say the wrong thing, the authorities will be there to beat you and arrest you. So please, if your neighbor says something out of the ordinary, if they have a complaint about their government housing, if they say something disparaging about illegal immigrations, uh, illegal immigrants, that mistake would be in the announcement. If they make a mistake about illegal immigrants, then don't worry, the authorities are on their way. So go ahead and, and shine the red laser at the offending party. The, the Gestapo will be on their way. That's your Hillary Clinton presidency. She's on TV every day. Um, you hear radio commercials of her. Everything is just made to be in her voice using AI. Um, coming up next at Denny's. Coming up next week at Denny's, you can get a Grand Slam combo for $3.99. Don't forget this com combo and this product was brought to you by Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. Um, we love our first female president only for six days at Denny's. Can you get this Grand Slam meal at such a low price? Thank you, Hillary. That's what it would be like if you were under Hillary Clinton. And so what she's saying, you know, the the best case scenario of what she's saying is if we just let anyone say hateful and mean things on the internet, it will have a bad psychological effect on children. So we better censor things. We better we better moderate and remove things. Of course, there are two answers answers for that. One is your insane lady, and who decides what is hate speech? Who decides what gets to be taken down or is infactual? As we've already seen for years and years now, we can't trust anyone to decide what is real and what is truth and what is not, because everybody lies. Everybody also tells the truth and think that thinks that they're the one who is the only one telling the truth. If we let somebody who Hillary Clinton would hire decide what the truth is, did Hunter Biden smoke crack or did he smoke meth? Was he with prostitutes? Were they just his friends? Can can you just can you prove that he paid for these prostitutes? Can you prove that that was actual crack rock and not methamphetamines? You say the wrong thing, you're going to jail. That's what the the reality is. You say something disparaging about the Democrats, and maybe you're wrong by 2%, maybe you're wrong by 50%. Maybe you say Joe Biden's classified documents were in his garage, but you didn't specify that they were inside of a cardboard box jail time. The other answer is just don't let kids on social media. I think we all as adults can say that they, pro they don't need it. When you were 13 years old, did you need a Facebook wall? I don't think you did. I think you survived. I think people were bullied and fat shamed just enough without social media as children. I think girls made it clear who was uh, dressed like a slut and guys made it clear which guys they thought were gay without social media. So that in and of itself is perfectly reasonable to say ban social media. That is why that could be the slogan, the presidential campaign slogan. Ban social media because we already know who the sluts and gays are. <laughs> <laughs> we already know Stacy and Chad are already letting everybody know do we want to move on to Ham Kamala Hamala I almost Hurricane Kamala voter ID I think we could skip that we could skip that now nah, let's play it let's just play it without context for the fans let's do it for the boys Sundays are for football and the boys is that you'd support it I don't think that we should underestimate what that could mean. Because in some people's mind, that means, well, you're going to have to um, Xerox or, 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 or <laughs> photocopy your ID to send it in to prove you are who you are. Well, there are a whole lot of people, especially people who live in rural communities, who don't. There's no Kinko's. There's no Office Max near them. People have to understand that when we're talking about voter ID laws. Oh, my God. Be clear about who you have in mind and what would be required of them to prove who they are. Of course, people have to prove who they are. <laughs> but not in a way that makes it, them, it almost impossible for them to prove who they are. These people can't prove who they are. They don't have printers. They don't have scanners. They don't have photocopiers. They don't have phones. But of course you have to prove who you are. Just be careful about pr who you are 
trying to make prove who they are, but you do have to prove who you are, but they can't prove who they are. Don't you understand? <laughs> Does, isn't she crystal clear? That's too easy. Everybody who's in the country is dumb and, and they don't have cell phones is what Kamala is saying. And they don't know how to work printers. They don't have copy machines. They have no way of getting ID to anywhere. When they buy alcohol and cigarettes, they don't have IDs. When they get their driver's license, they don't have a birth certificate. It's just impossible. This, you know, one thing Canada has on the United States is paper ballots. And it's insane to imagine an argument where you think that's not fine. If the grandmothers at the voting stations and the polling stations here can, you know, cut up enough three-inch pencils for people and get, gather all the votes and empty the cardboard boxes that we put them in, if the 86-year-old with glaucoma can do it here and Justin Trudeau can win 18 times from that, then I think the United States government should be okay with doing that because if they can cheat on paper, they can cheat you know, on Xerox machines. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be the lead in story to our interview. Um, what we've got here is a soccer, a, a new soccer team, and it's in Boston. Terrible name, by the way. They call it uh, Boss Nation FC, which sounds like a you know a late nineties. Euro trash DJ Boss Nation. Maybe they're just the song Zombie Nation or something. They came out with a commercial. Um, it's decent. It's for their new soccer team. Just want to remind you of that again. This is the commercial that caused controversy among the trans. Boston, the city of champions, a legacy filled with trophies, banners, rings, and balls. Old balls, <laughs> new balls steel balls cold balls even goat balls wait what yeah boston loves its balls but maybe there, there are too many balls in this town <laughs> so let's add a new chapter to our city's legacy with new idols new dreams and a new league to cheer for the national women's soccer league for every person, in every neighborhood, across every square mile. This is our city, our new team, our new nation. We are Boss Nation. So when you compare that to White Dudes for Harris, which was an attempt to be edgy and appeal to white guys in a sort of weird Gen X way, and it's a horrible commercial, you think about what can sort of the same message be in a better way. And this is it, right? Like, this is an actual decent commercial. You're, the idea behind the commercial is how can we get men to care about women's soccer? I mean, we can't really. But how can we do it? And, you know, a pretty funny premise. Old balls, steel balls, cold balls. You get Tom Brady in there. I'm hooked. Um, Boston Red Sox, Boston Bruins. Boston's a very tough city f in regards to sports fans. Maybe there's too many balls. That's kind of funny. I mean, I can't lie, it's not going to make me watch the soccer, but at least it would get me publicity because it's pretty funny. Then at the end, you show young lesbians, old lesbians, because those are the ones that care. They want to play in the sport, yada, yada, yada. All is well and good. If I saw that commercial, not in a news story, I'd be like, that's pretty funny. What is this team? If I didn't catch the part where it said it was uh, the soccer team, I would say, what is this team? What was this for? Tom Brady was in it. The Bruins were in it. What was, What is it for? But we can't have the fun. We can't have a good commercial um, that's for women. The league is for women. So obviously, maybe we got too many balls. The more I say it, it's kind of a funny commercial. But they had to apologize. This is my article for Blaze News. They apologized and removed the commercial. A Boss Nation football club posted a one-minute video on X the other day that featured cameos from Brady and the Boston Bruins. The video focuses on Boston's championship culture and highlights the trophies, banners, rings, and balls of the city. Old balls, new balls. That's pretty funny. Come on now. Are we orange because of Halloween? That'd be sick if we were on the website. Um, but there was a problem. A non-binary sounding woman who is the same reporter who had a problem with people wearing MAGA hats at a Caitlin Clark game came out and complained. This person said, whose name is Frankie. It's got to be Frankie, right? 
<laughs> the thing that bothers me most about this absurd campaign is how turfy it comes across. At a time when trans women are being excluded from the sport at every level, is too many balls really the right tagline you want to go with here? Oh my god. Turfy meaning trans exclusionary radical feminists. So even feminists obviously don't want men in their sports, so they had to come up with a term that the feminists were actually hateful. Um, so basically just even, even more disturbing looking women than regular feminists who can, you know, be, they could have a few short haircuts, but even those people are too right wing for them. We need to come up with a term to exclude actual feminists. And that is turf. So they deleted the campaign video and made a statement that said, while we hope to create a bold and buzzworthy brand launch campaign, we missed the mark. We fully acknowledge the content of the campaign did not reflect the safe and welcoming environment we strive to create for all. We apologize to the gay and trans community in particular for the hurt we caused. So girls can't have a commercial purporting to show their own sport. They can't have a joke to create hype for their own team because men have a problem with it. Isn't this insane? You know, we spent the last like six years, maybe since 2015, 2016 saying, you know, the sexism, the racism and all the stuff people are complaining about the wokeness. 99% of it is based on fake stuff. You know, there are real sexists and racists out there. We all have to uh, compromise our statements by saying that, but Almost all of this is fake. The hate crimes are almost all proven fake. All the anti-trans stuff, like, you know, it's proven fake. What they're talking about is surgeries for kids. But then comes along the trans people, which are, of course, the men pretending to, to be women. And they say, actually, we need to make sure that the misogyny stuff is actually real. And they say, women, you can't have commercials. You can't joke. You can't poke fun at men at all. Because this is what this is. This is men becoming offended because women mention that they have balls. Which is an insane thing to say. Because if you don't have balls, why would you be offended? So obviously this is men who dress up as women who have testicles and are getting offended by this. So the women can't have their own commercials. They can't have their own sports. That's real sexism, just to say for no reason, you know, these these bitches can't have a commercial that talks about balls. That's the insane stuff. And there's just as many insane people in the comments. One person said, just change the name and fire the people who were involved in approving this advertising and it will help. So they apologize for this and they still want them. It's still not enough. They have to change the name. Another one said, now apologize for the name. <laughs> Why do you have to apologize for a bad name and actually choose a name? At its face, defining women on the existence of men is just a really weak marketing play in 2024. I remind you that nobody's going to watch this if you don't give them a reason to. Nobody's going to say, I need to flick on that women's soccer game. You have to entice them. It's called advertising. If I'm starting a cricket league, if I'm starting a croquet league, if I'm starting a outdoor ball hockey league and people don't know about it, which they probably don't know about this new women's soccer team. Sorry to tell you, they probably don't know the league exists. You have to advertise, but you cannot do that if you are offending men in dresses with testicles is the most insane thing you have to say. Now, in that spirit, the women at the University of Nevada have said they are not going to play against San Jose State University, which has the male athlete. Of course, they are the fifth team to do this because there are, there is a man on the San Jose State University team. We brought to you the story a couple weeks ago. Before the Foxes. Us and Outkick, which I guess is owned by Fox. So technically Fox, imaginary producer. Um, but we brought you the interview with Brooke Slusser a couple weeks ago. Now we've got another interview with the girls from Nevada. Who are outright refusing. What happened was... The girls say, we're not going to play against San Jose State. The school then comes out and says, actually, the game is going to go on no matter what. But if the girls choose to sit out, we won't be punishing them, which is insane. Because you're saying, it's fine that you don't want to play. But actually, it's not fine that we don't play against this transgender person. 
which is an insane statement because if you're on an NCAA team and on scholarship, if you just choose not to play for for some unknown reason, for some protest you're doing, you're going to be suspended. You're there to play. We're paying you essentially. We're paying the taxpayer is paying you to play. But then for them to say it's okay if you sit out, but we do have to play this team to be in accordance with the law that's playing both sides of the coin. We now have an answer from the Mountain West Conference Commissioner, which is the NCAA division where these girls play in. Her name is Gloria Navarez. We wrote about this on Blaze News, of course. Gloria Navarez says she's not quite sure what the science is behind this, so she can't really give an answer. Navarro said in a recent press conference that the situation breaks her heart because the girls on the teams are human beings. Young people, student athletes on both sides of the issue are getting a lot of national negative attention. Why is that? She doesn't know. She says it doesn't just it just doesn't feel right to me. She continued, according to the Associated Press. She said she isn't sure about the language or the science about the issue. I'm learning a lot about the issue, she says. I don't know a lot about the language yet or the science or the understanding nationally of how this issue plays out. The external influences are so far on either side. We have an election year. It's political. So, yeah, it feels like a no win based on all the external pressure. You know, the student athlete in question, of course, we can't name the guy who's on a women's team. The student athlete meets the eligibility standard, so if a team does not play them, it's a forfeit, meaning they take a loss. So they want to, they don't want to be mean to the girls because they know the girls are right, but they're not brave enough to actually stand up for anything because the state in California in which they play, a lot of the teams, is insane, so they have to follow their insane laws. But This commissioner is a coward, and even the San Jose coach is a coward. Now, so what the player on San Jose State University told me is that they have meetings with the school, and the school is like, how is the transgender person doing? How uh, His name's Braden, goes by Blair. How is Blair doing? Is Blair safe? And when the other girls have something to say, they say, let's not speak for him. Let's not decide his gender for him. That's nobody's business but his. So they center everything around and care about only the guy playing on the girls team instead of the girls who have to play with the guy and be in the change room with him confirmed in the change room. Now here's what the coach said. His name is Todd Kress. He's a coward as well. He, I, I welcome him to come on and talk about it. Ring me up, Todd. Um, he says, I know it's definitely taken a toll on many of them. They're receiving messages of hate, which is completely ridiculous to me. When we had our first forfeit, there was a lot of heartbreak, and now we kind of come to expect it. But we know the certain programs that may forfeit. It still does hurt our student athletes when we don't play a match. But I think they've had co- they've come to accept it a little more, and I think that it's very a very unfortunate thing to say. What's the unfortunate thing here, Todd? Was it Todd or was it Josh? What's the unfortunate thing here, Todd? Why are they receiving hate? Receiving hate for doing what? For saying what? Against who? Why is, aren't we pressuring the boy to get off of the girls' team? Aren't we saying, hey, a guy dressed as a girl who believes he's a girl? Harsh, I know, but we are in harsh times. Why don't you get off the team? You're ruining it for the girls. If you can't make the men's team, that's a travesty, but you're not actually a girl. You, It's sort of like something you would have to say to a six-year-old. I'm sorry you feel this way, Bla- Braden Blair, but you're not actually a girl. It's fine that you want to dress this way. Nobody is saying you can't be who you are. Nobody is saying you can't dress a certain way, talk a certain way, act a certain way. But the reality is you are not a girl. You are a boy. So therefore, you can't play against the girls. You can't be in the girls' change room with the girls. You can't do things that every other boy can't do with girls. And this is what you have to say to adults these days. Well, they say you're not letting them be their authentic self. So who cares what the women think is what you're saying? Who cares what the women... We don't care about women. We care about a guy with a mental illness issues. We have to adhere to him. Do we say to the anorexic person, yes, you're skinny? Do we say to the person with the eating disorder, it's okay to keep eating? No, we don't. We do not adhere. We do not reinforce the problem. We say, hey, Billy or Trinity or Sally or Bobby or Ezekiel, or Muhammad, anybody of any race, we say, hey, we're going to help you through this, but this is what's true, and this is what's not true, and that's the end of it. So the girls at Nevada are saying no, and that's who we had an interview with here, which is Leah Salili. She corrected me on how to pronounce her name. Le-e- 
Ili'i, -E, I think, is what it was, but I'm not Samoan or Hawaiian. Um, I'm too stupid to pronounce that. She is one of the girls on the team, and she is saying no. She is saying that they are they refuse to play. The team came out and said, hey, you're actually playing, but if you want to sit out, that's fine. And why are these girls so strong? If you watch the UFC, you watch MMA, you see Hawaiian fighters, you see Samoan fighters, they are insane in a good way they are relentless they're ferocious they don't stop they have iron skulls you can't knock them out they have perseverance bred into their culture that is unmatched by many 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 other places in the world so these island these people from the i believe it's the polynesian islands is, is the word i'm trying to think of here these these samoans from hawaiians and these polynesians are so, you know, they're tough. They stand for what they believe in, which everybody should, of course. From Sweden to Denmark to Australia to Korea to Japan, stand up for what you believe in. But my theory, which I kind of touch on on the interview, is that they've got one girl from Malia uh, Pilamai. We've got Mele, and I'm going to butcher all these names. Tamo Peao from Hawaii. We've got Nicanora Clark from Hawaii. We've got Taya Maeva. I think she, I, I'm not sure who that, where she's from. Um, we've got Sia Lili from Hawaii. We've got Cohen Makala from Hawaii. And we've got Ambry Hanahano from Hawaii. And we've got a majority team here who are Hawaiian, Samoan, Polynesian girls from that ethnicity who are just like, um, no. And that's and you gotta applaud them. And it sounds so cringe in some ways that we have to say, you go, girl, right? Because we never actually had to do that. All the other times where people said, You go, girl, girl power, uh, sexism, whatever, it was like, uh, not really happening, right? But all of a sudden, we've got actual guys. And this is what happens when other men don't do anything is that creepy dudes and guys who, you know, have problems in their lives and whatever you want to attribute to the person who thinks that this is okay. Um, you know, you can't always expect women to stand up for themselves in a, a physical sense against a man. But we are seeing that there is a group of women at the Nevada University who are willing to stand up for it. And I think it has something to do with their upbringing. And where they're from and their cultural toughness. Just like the way the Japanese um, don't stand for woke shit for the most for the most part. I don't think these uh, Polynesian women, these Hawaiian women are going to do that either. That's just my opinion. We'll hear from uh, Lili, uh, see Lili here with her own answers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Here is our groundbreaking interview before Fox News <laughs> from a few days ago, I hope. All right. Sia from Nevada, you are a senior, correct? Yes, I am. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I know this is a, probably a crazy time for you, and a lot of people want to get your opinion on what's happening. You're the captain of the team, I was told, I think? Yes, I am. I'm a co-captain. Okay, so for those of the people who don't know that are watching, Nevada Wolfpack, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, the girls got together... They held a bit of a vote or had a meeting and you guys decided as a team that you didn't want to play San Jose State University, which of course has uh, a male player on it. If we're being completely honest, uh, I'm not going to ask you to go out on a limb and maybe say something that you'll get in trouble for. But in most people's eyes, it's a male player and you guys released a statement. Can you at least walk us through how this came about? You would have been the fifth team to forfeit a game against San Jose uh, un State University in the NCAA. Can you walk us through how you and your teammates got together to make this decision? Yeah, of course. Um, so we got together as a team and we just talked about the issue and um, everyone voiced our opinions because I think as a team leader, it's important to let everyone know that they have a voice. Um, and the vast majority of us just decided that, hey, this isn't right. Um, we need to protect women's sports and we're going to forfeit. So from there, we kind of put together a letter that we sent over to our administration and 
um, we came out with a statement. Um, unfortunately, our university uh, decided not to back us. Um, and they decided that they're going to keep going with the, they're going to have the matches scheduled. Um, but I mean, although our university hasn't um, supported us in this decision, I know our governor, Governor Lombardo, came out with a statement, which was really reassuring. Um, just last night at our Utah State game, Tulsi Gabbard, Sam Brown, um, Dwayne Mullen, like they all came to our game in support and just let us know that we do have people behind us who are supporting us. And I think that meant the world to a lot of us. And so in reference to your your school releasing a statement, now I wrote about this today, today I read it. Would it be a contradiction when they said, I believe they said that this statement by the team was put out without their consultation? Am I misreading that? Or does it, it sounds to me like you guys reached out to them and now they're saying that they weren't a part of it. Did you just say, hey, we're doing this? And then they responded with, we're not okay with it. Or did or, or are they fibbing a little bit? Can you explain that? Um, I think that we tried to go through like the most accurate channels. We wanted, we didn't want to blindside the administration um, with coming out with how we felt as a team. Um, but I think that that was just a way for the school to distance themselves from the statement that we have as a team have put out. Yeah. And, and we've seen that from a couple of the schools, I believe. And they had mentioned that nobody's going to be punished if they skip the game has, the majority of the team declared that they're still not going to play. Are you guys going to bite the bullet and play anyways and sort of in, in a protest manner? Or how is that going to work? Are they going to have to call up? Um, I know another one of the schools said that they called up some junior varsity players. What's the situation for that game going to be if they're still going forward with it? Well, I know that the school is still going to hold the match. Um, and it is at the discretion of our team if we will be there or not. And I guess you'll just have to see on October 26th. Well, I, I, I'm interested to see what happens there. Um, yeah. I looked at your team's roster and, and you're Hawaiian, right? Yes. Or I'm, I'm from Hawaii, but yeah. I'm Samoan. Yeah. And aren't there a couple other uh, Samoan girls on the team or from Hawaii? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a, a lot of Polynesians on our team, actually. Yeah. It's pretty what, nice. I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, <laughs> People from that area are generally quite tough. I watch a, a lot of Thank sports you. with them in it. And so I was like, okay, this is adding some credence to the people from this region are very tough people and stand on their morals uh, a lot. So it starts to make a bit more sense. Now, I did read a couple, I think it was about a month ago now, that one girl on your team, I forget her name, but her mother spoke out. She gave an interview about not wanting to see her daughter play against San Jose State University and, the, and their male player because of the dangers about it. So were you guys sort of mulling this over? Because I had sort of predicted that this that you guys might be a team that joins in on this. So when did you guys start noticing, take, take notice of this as an issue and start seeing like, hey, we're playing them in a few weeks and uh, this might become a problem? Um, I think, like, of course, we all saw that. Um, my teammate's mother decided to be very public about the way that she went about projecting her opinion, which I think she's entitled to. Um, so, yeah, it's been a topic um, for our team for a while now. But I think that us as young women have grown a lot and matured a lot in knowing that we can go and get our own information and not trust just one source. And something I've noticed since I've been covering that I want to ask you about in regards to standing up for all of this, have you experienced or have you noticed that there's actually a lot of men who push back on this and say, hey, it's not fair that you're not letting this person compete against you or you don't want to compete against you uh, or, or against them? Have you noticed any of that yet? I know it's pretty recent, pretty fresh still, but have you been facing any pushback like that? And what would your opinion be to a, a guy who who takes issue with you doing this? Um, actually, I haven't got much pushback, um, <laughs> surprisingly. Yeah, it's just been a lot of support, which like I hold dear and dear to my heart because, I mean, this was something that was really tough for my teammates and me. Like, personally, I thought that this was something that was very controversial, but it's so important to me and I'm so passionate about this that 
I felt the need to speak up. I asked Brooke a similar question from who plays with uh, plays Blair, with, yeah. Blair, Br- Braden, Bladen, Braden, Blood and Bladen. Who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she said that she decided to speak out about this because she, it, it's very important to her, obviously, that women are allowed to have their own sports. I think I'm not going to put words in your mouth. I think it's crazy that we have to discuss this. But she said that she was always sort of a person who was outspoken like this. Do you feel the same way? Have you always been an outspoken person? Have you always, you know, ha- been the one to, to speak out when people were a little bit afraid to? Um, yeah, I honestly, I, I've always been this way where it's just, I mean, I'm studying it too in college. Um, my minor is in communication. So I think just having those tools and just knowing that I have the opportunity and the platform to do something that I know is the right thing was just like, this is clear as day. Yeah. And I, and I asked that question cause I, cause I feel that sentiment a lot of, wanting to be or feeling the need to be the person to speak out and i wonder like is there something about volleyball i never played volleyball uh don't ask me why about my height don't ask me okay we'll just say we'll just say i'm six four for the purpose of this interview okay yeah i totally believe you by the way thank you thank you um is there something about volleyball players where this is more frequent the type of woman who plays volleyball because we don't see it in some other sports we don't see it people speaking out in uh boxing for one uh we don't see anybody standing up to it in uh i don't know what other sports i don't think it's happened in basketball and wrestling we don't really see it but we've seen in like swimming and volleyball is there something about volleyball players that makes you guys different um i wouldn't say different but i have met some very passionate and just amazing people through this sport so i think that volleyball players are definitely a special bunch but i'm pretty biased so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so like when you guys come out with this statement and then you see what the school says how disappointing is that like does the school communicate back to you because i know again for san jose state university i was told that the school basically has these meetings they center around the person in question they want to know how that person's feeling towards everybody else and it seems like the schools aren't really caring what you know the girls that they are providing i assume most of you are on scholarship and so they're basically give like paying you and, and they don't seem to want to give credence to what the, how these girls feel. How, how is the school communicated directly to you guys? Is there a liaison? Is it the athletic director? And how does that make you feel when they're sort of just like, eh, we can't really back you up. We're going to choose somebody from another school. Um, at first it was really frustrating because I don't know if you read it anywhere, but um, the first statement that they came out with the, we intend to play all of our scheduled matches, including the San Jose match on the 26th. Um, that came, I think, about four hours before our in-state rival against UNLV. And we were at, like, pregame meal before going into, like, our our usual game ritual routine. And I'm sitting at the table, and I, my phone starts blowing up, and I'm like, what the heck is happening? And everyone's asking me about, like, just this issue, and I was just like, I have like something else to worry about. Like I have a game in a couple hours. Like I was so not locked in, which was like really tough for me as an athlete because this is something that I've been passionate about my whole life. And I worked hard to get to the place that I am in now. And just to know that like the university didn't acknowledge that they didn't like acknowledge the fact that we're the team that's going to play against this person um, was really like frustrating. And it was just the, the way that they went about it was not, I don't think was okay. Um, but they did have a meeting with us the following week and apologized. And when they came out with that second statement, they made sure to let us know that nobody would have any repercussions if we chose not to play. And they let us know that the statement was coming out. So isn't that, that's like a backhanded compliment in a sense. Like you're not going to be punished. So we kind of know what's, what you're doing is right. But also we're going to publicly say that we stand for diversity and we love the quality and inclusion of all of this. So they're kind of playing both sides. And in a sense, you can't blame them. But isn't? But do you think that's is that disappointing? I don't want to put you in a tough spot, but I would be disappointed where it's like, OK, so on one hand, you don't think uh, it, you think if I forfeit like on a personal level, I won't be punished. But on the other hand, you think it's awesome what's happening because if you were just sat out, if you're just like, hey, guys, I don't want to play today for no reason, you'd be punished, I would assume. 
but you're if you sit out for this reason, you're not punished. That's kind of sending a mixed message. Uh, yeah, I don't really feel comfortable commenting on that. I just, just oh, got to leave it at that. Smart girl. <laughs> uh, I, I think what you're doing is very admirable because I think, and there's so many sports where um, people don't want to speak up against it, and people have been begging Leah for this. They, people have been begging for girls to stand up together and say, we're just not going to play because that's the only – way that it's not gonna it's not gonna perpetuate and go through all these different leagues first it's it's this league or it's this conference um and then it's gonna be all the other conferences and they're gonna copycat each other for better or for worse it's either gonna go one direction or it's gonna go the other so people have been begging like girls why don't you just stop playing and now girls are actually doing it and it sucks because especially for you and it sounds like i'm beating this over your head but i'm trying to be nice it's your senior year you shouldn't you should be focused on you know either graduating going for for a job somewhere else you know all these different things that are supposed to be on your mind but instead you have to worry about you know people being mad at you for not wanting to play against a guy i don't know leah i don't know if i'm crazy here but i think people are very thankful for you for doing this because uh, you're one of the few people that are standing up, and I think that you deserve the praise. And I can tell that you're doing a lot of interviews now, and your voice, you're getting tired, you're wearing it now, and you're just like, how come I have to talk about this so much? It shouldn't be this way. And I just think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that compliment. You're welcome. Um, but, I mean, this is – it's bigger than just me. It's bigger than – just this one person on this team. It's the future of women's sports. And I think, although it's something tough to go through my senior season on, like this is something that I'm going to remember forever. So just knowing that I had an opportunity and I took it is all worth the while. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's going to be one of those things where you can put this down as one of the markers. And it's kind of sad that it has to come to a sport where, you know, somebody got hit in a, a spike in the face the other day. It's happened in other states and lacrosse. It's happened. But I guess, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen like we saw in certain Olympic sports. But that's a different topic altogether. Is there anything else you want to say uh, to the people watching who might think that who might disagree with you? What's like your, your your couple of sentences you can say as to why you don't think it's fair? Um, I just believe that a woman deserves the right to play on that court and that it's just an opportunity that's been taken from a woman. We've come so far. I mean, back in the day, women couldn't even play a D division one volleyball, like on the court They we couldn't vote. We couldn't do any of this. And title nine was made so that sex based discrimination didn't happen. And that's exactly what's happening today. So I just want fairness for women and for women's sports to be for women. Yeah, we've come a long way. We've come come a long way and certainly somehow circled back to the the simplest form of what I would call like legitimate sexism. So thank you for doing this interview. Good luck with the rest of the press you're doing. I hope you guys have a great rest of your season. And I and I can't wait to see what happens on the day of. What's the date of that that match? October twenty sixth. All right, just in time for Halloween. <laughs> so Spooky. Whatever, exactly. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Turn it up, Jordan.